Muay Thai and kickboxing fail in the West Coast? Let's check it out. Muay Thai and kickboxing should be extremely big in the West. But why aren't they? On paper, Muay Thai and kickboxing should be pretty big here in the West. Yeah, I agree. When your casual friend watches UFC, they oftentimes just want to see the striking and knockouts and the stand-up in general and dread seeing fighters go to the ground. That's me. That's me. I don't like grappling. I don't care what anyone says. Yo, I want to see them throw hands and knock each other out. As Bob Arum beautifully puts it, MMA is just a bunch of guys rolling around like homosexuals no, on the ground. On the other side, he did not say that. Did he get canceled? Yo, that's not real. When Dana was asked if he was going to add kickboxing to the list of things he promotes, he said, tell me the last time you saw a big kickboxing match that's pulled gates, the world cared. Never happened. Though in the graphic mm. I found this quote from, it shows the gate and attendance numbers of one of the biggest UFC events, Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez, pulling in $17.7 .7 million and 21,000 people being dwarfed by the Japanese kickboxing event between Tenshin and Takaru, raking in $25 million Damn. and 60,000 people in attendance. And if it was really the popularity that is stopping Dana from promoting a sport, then why the hell does Power Slap exist? Power Slap- Yo, Power Slap has got to be the worst thing to watch. Slap is doing god awful numbers now, even with Dana's aggressive promotion. And I don't think before Dana's acquisition, these slapping competitions were doing numbers, let alone the numbers kickboxing is doing now. Though I'm sure if a guy like Dana with insane promotional power actually wanted to promote kickboxing or Muay Thai, that would be wildly successful because again, Easy. that's really what the casual fans <laughs> tune into. This is why typically in the West, the biggest stars are always strikers. Conor McGregor, Hells, yeah. Israel Adesanya, Sean O'Malley, Francis. Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Francis. and on the opposite end, guys like Bilal Muhammad or Colby Covington are not as appreciated and are labeled are boring because of their wrestle-heavy oh. style. Yeah. So if most boring. casual MMA fans, which is a huge population, just wants to see the striking part of the sport, then why isn't the sport that's literally all striking big in the West? There really isn't a single reason as to why kickboxing and Muay Thai isn't big in the West, but it really just boils down to Western sports culture, which makes it hard for these sports to thrive. Also, for those not in the know, kickboxing is just how it sounds, boxing with the ability to kick, while Muay Thai is the art of eight limbs, meaning two punches, two kicks, but also two elbows and two knees. And another thing to note is that Muay Thai and kickboxing have broken out in some Western countries, of course, I'm talking about the Netherlands with their Dutch style of kickboxing and also France as well. But I would say a majority of Western countries aren't too interested in these forms of striking. So the first, I guess if, if you guys are talking about the West side in that kind of formation, that it's only like Asian countries, it makes sense because imagine having to schedule a fight, a kickboxing or Muay Thai competition fight in the West side, like America, the time that they would have to actually have it on so that everyone in the world that enjoys that would have to be like, what, three in the morning, four in the morning. You can't get the best of both worlds, getting all those fighters in the Western side. And then if the West side doesn't even care to watch it and all the majority of the people are on the East, man, the time difference dana is just saying like yo i can't dip, double dip in both mma's working these guys like to see it that first reason sense. as to why kickboxing and muay thai isn't big in the west is because of how well established boxing and mma is in the west boxing and now MMA in the form of the UFC is so culturally embedded in Western sports culture. Obviously, boxing goes back over a hundred years now and has been one of the oldest, well-established sports in the West. And because of their dominance in the Western combat sports market, it makes it hard for others to enter this market as well. I mean, do you guys remember how hard it was for the UFC to be established? Boxing promoters tried desperately to label mixed martial arts as something for skinheads, and again, guys rolling around like homosexuals on the That's ground. Crazy. It also didn't help that politicians were on boxing promoters side with former US Senator John McCain calling the sport quote, human cockfighting. And because of this negative press, the sport was actually banned in New York in 1997 and wasn't legalized That's until rough. 2016. And what's still really crazy to me is that big countries like France who have housed some of the best MMA talent in the world Francis. didn't legalize MMA until recently in 2020. It took the promotional genius of Dana White to turn the UFC from a freak show to, I would say, a pretty well-established sport 
that can compete with the West's traditional sports on most days, and to some, a little too well established. So with boxing and MMA so well established in the West and dominating in the combat sports field to the point where some people are calling Monopoly, it practically leaves no room for kickboxing or Muay Thai. I also saw a comment on my community post I don't know, I'd be down to kind of see Dana White do something that's similar to UFC. Just have like UFC strikers or fighters or anyone that wants to kind of try it out. Just another show. I feel like it would do extremely well. ...about the topic and it basically read that boxing and MMA satisfy everything for a combat sports fan. If you just want to see guys like punching grappling. each other, yeah. boxing has you covered. And if you want more, MMA satisfies that itch with everything yeah. else. Like and grappling. though the UFC does encapsulate everything, kickboxing is essentially satisfied by a lot of specific matchups. If you just want to see high-level striking, you can tune into an Israel Adesanya versus Alex Perea fight or a Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje fight. But even though these top dogs in combat sports dominate the Western market, I still do think that if a talented promoter like Dana White or somebody in the West Agreed. was able to promote kickboxing and Muay Thai well, it would be wildly successful because again, most casual fans still just want to see the striking. Hell now moving yeah. on to a little more of a fucked up reason casual. as to why kickboxing and Muay Thai isn't big in the West is because most of the best kickboxers and Muay Thai fighters simply have funny names to Westerners and foreigners oh are often shunned in general despite how good they are. And this happens Way all the time in Western wrong. sports. Let me give you an example in basketball. In the NBA, Latvian star Kristaps Porzingis was booed by New York Knicks fans when he got drafted simply because no one in New York knew who he was. What the that fuck good? did they do? Who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is Tingus Pingus? I never heard of fucking Latvia. You drafted this fucking kid. You stupid motherfuckers! You and Latvia is already Pingus, a Western Pingus. country, so imagine some of the names coming out of these Asian Rotan countries. Man. And also, fuck them fans in New York. Chris Ops proved them wrong and balled out in New York oh, okay. as he I was guess. easily the best player on that team while he was on the Knicks. Oh, man, and this goes beyond sports. There's actually been several academic papers showing that a lot of times employers in the West are less likely to hire people with hard to pronounce names. And this is why people often westernize their names when they come here. So if we go back to the world of kickboxing and Muay Thai, and we look at some of the biggest stars' first names, that's already pretty tough for Westerners. And then if we look at their last names, that's definitely not a good sell in the Western market. And a really cool thing to know about Thai fighters is that they will traditionally Did it say Sun Chai Muay Thai Gym? Can I just see that? Sun Chai Muay Thai Gym. Dude, that is not his last name. Is that his last name? Definitely not a good sell in the no Western chance. market. And a really cool thing to know about Thai fighters is that they will traditionally change their first name to a nickname that sometimes describes how they fight or just simply oh. is something really cool. And then they'll change their last name to reference where they're fighting out of. So this is oh. why Taiwan Chai's quote unquote last name is PK San Chai Muay Thai Gym, meaning that he trains out of the gym San Chai oh. trains out of. You can read this one article, which goes in depth on how Thai fighters basically choose their names. Interesting. I think it's really cool and That's it's cool. pretty straightforward once you try to sound it out. But if we're gonna be honest, when a Westerner sees a long ass one. name like that, it's definitely not going to sell. Yo, can you guys, people who are uh, able to give me one of those names, I want I want like a Taiwanese kind of like kickboxing name too. If you guys can, if you guys are watching this, can you guys drop some for me? Can you drop some for me? I wanna, I wanna see what you guys come up with. And another thing to note is that, yes, these are just nicknames. They don't actually change the legal name to this. On documents and stuff, they still fill it out with their legal birth name, but it's not like their birth name is any more easy oh. to pronounce for Westerners. What? And yeah, it sucks to see that Western culture discredits talent simply because they have a funny name, but that's the reality of it and honestly a big reason as to why stars in the East are not often big in the West. Another thing that's simply out of these guys' control is their size. Southeast and East Asian people are small, I should know. All of the biggest stars in Muay Thai and kickboxing come from this region and they're just simply way smaller than the average Westerner. Usually, Western combat sports fans are drawn to the Giants throwing it down. Historically, the biggest stars in boxing has always been from the heavyweight division. Okay, I agree. Heavyweight fighters have that power and, sh and stuff, but like, dude, those little guys, man, they are fast. Bro, they punch fast, they move fast, and you can see they can still take hits. But damn, they are, they fly. 
and that weight class has by far the most recognizable names in combat sports in the West. Now I will say it has kind of changed in boxing in the UFC. I would say boxing's most publicized division right now is probably yeah, lightweight, see? and those guys are pretty small. Yo, these guys. And the UFC's yeah. most publicized division is also lightweight are. at 155, and, and those guys are pretty average size. But historically, it's always been hard to get things going for the smaller guys. I mean, there was a time the 125 pound division in the UFC was going to be wiped from existence because the division didn't bring enough publicity. And or Dana Damn. White hates Mighty Mouse, but it's easy to see that the West Damn. wants things big. And finally, another good reason as to why kickboxing and Muay Thai isn't as big yeah, in the West as it, it is in other parts of the world is because of the immense respect these fighters have for each other and oh, the lack of animosity. Respect. Kickboxers and especially Muay Thai fighters have immense respect for one another. And sure, Rod Tang and Sanchai will start showboating, but I don't think any of those guys have actual beef with their yeah. opponent. There's an immense like amount of respect between all fighters, which is great to see, but is a terrible sell if you're a promoter in the West. What really built boxing in the UFC in the West was shit talk and rivalries. In boxing, Muhammad Ali really elevated the sport to another level by being a huge trash talker. I mean, the guy was literally rhyming his trash talk. Oh and obviously God. Floyd would follow this level of spectacle at press conferences, routinely talking shit to his opponents. And I would assume everybody knows the story oh, yeah, of Conor McGregor. McGregor by now. With his quick wit, list oh, of quotables, and his shit talk persona, Conor single-handedly elevated the UFC and its promotion with his larger than life personality. Shit talk, heated press conferences, animosity, and beefs are ultimately what sells in combat sports, especially in the West. I mean, look what's happening in the influencer boxing world. Oh, as big oh. as some of the guys in kickboxing like are, this. with their lack of shit talk or larger than life personalities, it's a hard sell for the West. But despite all those reasons, the constant violence and action in these fights is something the West would definitely enjoy it just has to be marketed and promoted correctly obviously dana would be the best guy to do it but he has some weirdly strong position on not inviting kickboxing under his promotion but if one would oh, well. somehow yeah, grow in dope. the west Yo, and we start gotta, competing yeah. there i do think dana would have to compete yeah, and to that west. would be amazing but anyways what do you guys think about the world of muay thai and kickboxing in the west Will it ever grow to the point where it's as big as the UFC or will it stay as something in the East? Again, thank you guys for watching. Peace. I enjoyed the Muay Thai and kickboxing time when watching it on this channel. The MMA is eh. I did enjoy Francis though, but I do like that he went into boxing because I feel like that sport's gonna do better for him. MMA is all right and all, but I feel like there should be maybe within the UFC a category where you could see like two different uh, divisions or uh, categories fight, something similar to one championship, or maybe they can do that to UFC, but I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. I know a lot of you guys love the MMA, but uh, I kind of want to see it, you know, cut in half. Let, let Give us some options. Some can, you know, grapple and you can see events on that. And some are like the kickboxing championships and the Muay Thai championships. That'd be lit. I think one champion does that. I think it's like grappling belt, kickboxing belt, and Muay Thai belt. I'm pretty sure last week uh, we saw videos on that. But anyways, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll check you guys on the next one. Uh, cheers. For now. Peace.